You know, you talk about the late 70s, early 80s, there was a bastion of uh, new and exciting goalies that made an immediate impact on their squads. Now, this guy, not say he's forgotten, but we kind of forget how much of an impact he made on the Vancouver Canucks in a short time he was there. But when he did, he really helped make Vancouver uh, a prominent power again, went on to uh, a career with the Rangers that really uh, improved their stead in that tough New York Islanders rivalry, and uh, eventually became uh, a major head coach in the NHL, the KHL, and on the international level for several teams. Now, uh, Glenn Hanlon, you know, six feet 185, looked look bigger than that, but when he was in Brandon, uh, growing up, a lot of people predicted uh, great success for him. Now, he was eventually drafted by the Vancouver Canucks in a 1977 NHL entry draft in the third round after a more than decent career in the MJHL and for the Brandon Wheat Kings. He played with the Brandon Travelers of the MJHL over two campaigns and then jumped to the big team, uh, played 43 games with the Wheat Kings, in 75 and in 76 put up a 31 25 and 4 record in 64 games now he was so good to westminster asked to use him for the Morrinville cup playoffs who went two and one but that 77 campaign was drafted probably one of the best ever for a major junior player in wchl history he went 49 7 and 7 uh, 3.09 average and he played 16 games in uh, the playoffs so 81 games that season taking a lot of pucks taking a lot of uh, heat on his shoulders now he had his first games with uh, Vancouver in 78 with a 1-2-1 two, one, one record but spent most of the campaign with the Tulsa Oilers with a 25-23-3 and three record uh, where everybody expected him to be the eventual Vancouver uh, uh, number one now in 78, he was the CHL's Rookie of the Year, and ironically, he got more press for this. On October 14, 79, he allowed the first uh, Cure NHL goal scored by Wayne Gretzky, who would eventually become the NHL's all-time scoring leader. Hanlon has been quoted as saying, I created a monster, in reference to allowing uh, Gretzky's uh, first goal. Now. The numbers with Vancouver at the start were decent. 79, he went 12, 13, and 5. 1980, as the number one, he went 17, 29, and 10. But in 81, he found himself back in the minors for a short while, playing with uh, Dallas with a 3 and 1 record. Now, in 82, right before uh, Vancouver, again, uh, Exact, exact, exacted, uh, you know, a tough player in the Western uh, Western Conference. He was eventually moved to St. Louis. Now, this was a controversial the, the, the decision because a lot of people felt that Hanlon was going to be a long-term uh, fix for Vancouver's um, what he called uh, goaltending uh, woes. Now. What was ironic here, ladies and gentlemen, 82, Vancouver made the Stanley Cup Final, and he was uh, let go right before this. He only wrapped up uh, the season with St. Louis with two games. 83, he found himself kind of mired in St. Louis's, uh, you know, a weird goaltending uh, trio at the time. Found himself in the New York Rangers, he found a second life to predict the success that a lot of people felt were coming to him. And uh, 83, 84, 85, 86, there were heavy rivals against the Rangers, almost knocking him off in the playoffs in 84. Now, 84 was his best campaign with uh, the Blue and White, with a 28-14-4 record, with a decent 3.52 uh, goals against average. And like in New York those years, he was taking like some heavy bucks. But what was kind of, kind of weird about this, ladies and gentlemen, uh, after, uh, after a strong 85, uh, 86, he found himself... Uh, again, on the outs in New York, he, he, he found himself in New Haven of the AHL, then with Adirondack uh, Red Wings of the uh, AHL in the Detroit system. But he made it back to the NHL, and he put up uh, decent numbers over four seasons with Detroit, 
uh, 36, 47, 39, and 45 games playing, you know, uh, around the 500 mark for those campaigns with some uh, good goals against average. And again, it was strong for them in the playoffs in 87, 88 when Detroit started to return. He was a big factor in them having some success in the postseason after years outside. Now, I wrapped up his NHL career with the San Diego Gulls in uh, 1991. Uh, so, NHL totals, 167 uh, wins, 202 uh, losses, 61 ties, 26,000 minutes played, 13 shutouts. They're a 3.61 uh, uh, average. Now, we look at the awards and accomplishments for Hanlon uh, after being drafted and before being drafted. Now, WCCHL, he he, uh, he he really had excellent numbers. He was a top goalie in the association in 77 for Brandon. All-star in 76 and 77. Made the all-star game 76 and 77. He holds the Brandon records uh, for most career shutouts and shutouts in one season. Uh, he won two games in the Memorial Cup for New Westminster in 76. He was a WCHL goals against leader in 77. He was a WCHL shutouts leader for Brandon in 76 and 77. He had the most games played in the league in 76 with 64. Uh, minutes leader in 76 with 3,500. Uh, playoff games uh, played leader uh, in 77 with 16. Playoff minutes lead leader with 913 in 77. He was the MJHL shutouts leader in 74. He was also rated in the Hockey News Draft Preview issue as the WCHL's number one goalie for the 77 NHL Draft. Now, with all that uh, success, uh, he, his awards started to kick in when he came in the, uh, in the league. Uh, he, again, lost in the Stanley Cup Finals, Finals of Vancouver as a goalie coach in 94. He was Vancouver's MVP in 79, the Molson Cup of three-star winner in 79 and 80. He won the New York Rangers Players Player Award in 84. New York Rangers Alumni Association started the year in 85. He led the league in shutouts, actually, in Detroit in 88 with four. He won the uh, Playoff Goals Against Average uh, Leader Award for Detroit in 87, 1.67. And he was the NHL Playoff Shutouts Leader in 87 for Detroit and 88 again for Detroit. Now, he was named Vancouver's goaltending consultant on September 15th, and, uh, September 5th, 91, and had the title upgraded to goalie coach prior to the 94 season and remained there through the Stanley Cup run. He was named Vancouver's assistant coach in the summer of 94 and remained there until May 1999. He was named Washington's AC on July 15, 2002 and remained there until December 10, 2003 when he was made uh, uh, head coach. Now, his coaching career is, has been uh, been quite interesting and i tell you why here. Now, the man he called, uh, the man he called Red has gone every place in his coaching uh, career. Now, again, serving for the Canucks and Capitals before they had been the head coach of the Portland Pirates and then the Capitals. Now, after a miserable start to the 2004 season, Capitals GM George McPhee fired coach Bruce Cassidy and promoted Hanlon to the head coach. The Capitals went 15-39 under Hanlon to finish the year. Now, led by 2004 first-round pick Alexander Ovechkin, the Capitals were expected to improve. However, the team was still young and com uh, compiled a record of 29-40-41-12 and 12 the next season. Despite this, Hanlon was guaranteed one more year as a coach of the Capitals. In 2005, he was signed to coach the Belarus hockey team and led the squad to a 10-plate finish at the 2005 Worlds and to a historic 6-place finish at the 2006 Championships. He was named Sportsman of the Year by major Belarusian sports newspaper, uh, uh, I can't pronounce it, Chipa Khan in 2006. Now in 2007, the uh, Capitals compile, compile the 8-5 and 4 mark by the end of November, though long losing streaks eliminated the Caps' chances of making the postseason as he finished 28-40 and 14. Now over the 2007 offseason, McPhee signed many talented players including Mikkel Nylander, Tom Pody, Victor Kozlov and young Swedish star Nicholas Backstrom, elevating expectations of Washington. 
In the season's first week, the Capitals uh, jumped to 3 0 and went, but went on to lose 15 of their next 18 games, which led to Hamlin's uh, dismissal. McPhee stated that Hamlin had lost control of the team, so he elected to replace Hamlin with Bruce Woodrow, the head coach of the HL's Hershey Bears. Now, after Hamlin's exit, the Capitals went against the high flying Flyers and Hurricanes, and he finished 37 17 and 7 the rest of the way in 2008, notching the first division title since 2001. Now, following the dismissal, Hanlon accepted an offer by the Capitals to act as a scout base in Washington. Now, on February 14, 2008, it was announced that Hanlon would be head coach of the uh, Finnish SM Liga team, Shukarit. Now, on March 24, 2010, he was announced as a new head coach of the Slovak national team. He replaced Jean Flick and signed a four-year contract that would uh, bring him to the Sochi Olympics in Russia. Now, in 2014, Slovakia, under his conduct, had finished uh, in 12th place at the Worlds in Germany in 2010. This contract ended prematurely on May 18, 2011, after the World Champions in Slovakia, where he only finished 10th with his squad. Now, from 2011 to 2013, he was assistant coach of the Vancouver Giants of the Western Hockey League before returning to coach in Europe. In 2013, he returned to coach the Belarusian national hockey, ice hockey team, replacing Andrei Skal, Skalabelka. On May 27, 2014, it was announced that Hanlon signed a two-year contract as a new head coach for the Swiss men's national hockey, ice hockey team. Handling the Swiss Ice Hockey Federation, however, part of company in October 2015, uh, by mutual consent due to family reasons. Now, on May 19, 2016, he was named GM of the Western Hockey League's Vancouver Giants, the organization he had worked for as an AC earlier in his career, but he left the organization after 2018 season. Now, on June 18, 2018, he was named the coach of the Hungarian team, DVTK Zsekas Medivic. On May 8, 2020, he eventually uh, found his way in a journey, a journey, being named head coach of Krefeld Penguin uh, of that country. Now, I know for a fact that Hanlon's probably one of the most travel goalies in the history of the NHL, not only with the teams he played for, but the national federations he was a part of. Now, awards and achievements over the years, again, uh, he's also been the, uh, inducted into the Manitoba Hall of Fame, and I'm not sure if he went in as a player or as a builder, but uh, I think for Canadian coaches, he probably, other than a few uh, select people, he has the most international assignments of any uh, coach at the Hills of Manitoba. Very, very interesting how Washington rebounded after he was fired. I don't know all the particulars there, but obviously... To come within uh, minutes of knocking off the New York Islanders in their dynasty, Hanlon uh, drove uh, teams in that division nuts back in the day. Because Glenn Hanlon was a very interesting situation. Now, you know when you get a former 20, go 20 game winner in Major League Baseball on the tail end of their career, they're going to come up with a great game every once in a while. Now that's what Hanlon was. He wasn't the same goal he was when he came into junior prominence of in the late 1970s, but in the mid-1980s I saw Hanlon play against the Islanders and the, uh, the uh, MSG announcer would say, you know, maybe this is a night that Hanlon is going to help us knock off the Islanders. He came very close. And he came within five minutes, I think at one point, uh, becoming a New York folk hero. I think the Islanders had, uh, had to make a comeback to win a playoff game very late. And, uh, you know, but he looked kind of weird in a Ranger jersey because I saw him so many years playing in Vancouver. And he seemed kind of, I don't know, out of place. It was almost like uh, when John Davidson first came over from St. Louis for the Rangers. It took a while for me to get used to it because... You know, every kid back in the day that was following the NHL, each team had their specific goalie. Like, you had Palmatier in Toronto, you had Hanlon in Vancouver, you had uh, Dryden and LaRuck in Montreal. So to see him with the Rangers, it'd be similar when Michel LaRuck, I think, went to Boston as well. It's kind of a jarring thing, and Roar Rogie uh, playing with uh, with Boston on the tail end of his career. Anyway, but for me, Glenn Hanlon, one of the most underrated goalies of all time. I like his style. And, uh, you know, you do the, you do the rough math, ladies and gentlemen. He's been involved in hockey on uh, numerous levels for a half a century, and that alone deserves our respect. But I look, again, at that one of the biggest 
uh, goalie years ever in Brandon '77. That is that is just uh, it's mind-boggling how somebody, you know, his uh, his in his youth, uh, 20 years old, playing 81 games in one of the most dangerous leagues for snipers and for shooters and for the slap shot and in front of the net. I mean, he probably started a game at 185 pounds and lost 15 or 20 pounds because. My God, he took a lot of rubber in that league and took a lot of rubber in Vancouver as well. So, ladies and gentlemen, if you like what we're doing, give us a like, comment, and subscribe. And everybody remembers Glenn Hanlon for the mask, too, as well. You're going to see that in some of the photos. Uh, you know, one of, the, one of the last of the cagers, as we say. Thanks for listening. Bye.